when prepping any kind of cereal grain for best results, rinse your grains clean. Look how dirty that is. You got little bugs floating around in there. Bits of the bag are floating around here. All sorts of filth. Keep rinsing them out, dumping off, decanting all of this water on top, adding fresh water, stirring it up until your water runs clean. This is the second rinse through. You can see there's less bugs, but there's still pretty, pretty dirty water in here. It might take you four or five times, but it's worth the effort. All right, five rinses in and it's looking pretty clean. There's no more bugs. There's no more excess bran or bits of debris from your bags or what have you. Now you might say, what's the point? All this stuff is just food for the mycelium. Well, maybe to some extent it is, but more importantly, your sterilizer works by uh, condensing steam on the surface of your grains to sterilize. And you don't want a whole bunch of overburden inside of your jars or your bags that your sterilizer is going to have to um, basically make contact with and sterilize along with your grains. So by rinsing and washing your grains off, you're removing all sorts of materials that are unnecessary for the healthy growth of your mycelium and making it a whole lot easier to come out with clean sterile grains in the end. Once you've all, you've rinsed all of your grains and they're nice and clean, fill to twice the height of your, uh, the level of grain with piping hot water. This will allow this volume of water to come uh, more quickly to a boil than otherwise. One more note about rinsing and cleaning your grains. Uh, not only is it going to make it a lot easier to sterilize your grains, but uh, once sterile and in your jars or in your bags, uh, removing all of the bran and all the excess dirt is going to make it a lot easier for your grains to roll freely within those vessels. They're not going to clump together or cause you issues with uh, excess starches and whatnot clumping everything together. Put your pot on your heat source, get it up to a rolling boil. As your pot begins to boil, you can see that the grains are starting to change color a little bit. They're beginning to take on some water and hydrate. It's got a lot more time to go. To check the hydration level of your grains, just uh, grab a little bit out, plop it down onto a table, use a knife or a scalpel to cut the centers open. I've already done so and uh, you can see the interior of the grain. There's a starchy core. It's all white. You can see a veneer of uh, on the exterior of the grain where it is brown and it's hydrated. That one, you can see that the starchy core is starting to disappear. It's almost gone. And the exterior is all brown and hydrated. What you want is for all of that starchy interior to be completely translucent or almost completely translucent before laying out to dry before loading into your jars. This process of hydration and checking the starchy core for uh, hydration levels is the same for all common large cer cereal grains like rye, oats, this is wheat, and with the exception of corn, corn is hydrated in a different way, but for the main large cer cereal grains, the hydration process is exactly the same, the prep process is exactly the same. This is how it looks when it's completely hydrated. There's a few burst grains in here, but uh, you can see the difference between raw grain, uh, semi-hydrated grain, and hydrated grain. Once hydrated, turn off heat. Once you have your grain strained, lay them out somewhere, whether they're in a pile like this or out flat, you can use uh, a screen or put a fan on them, whatever. The thermal mass of the grains will allow them to evaporate quite a bit of the surface water. You want these things to be dry on the surface before loading. You don't want to load wet grains into your bags or into your jars. Unlike seeds like millet, 
millet does not hydrate completely because it's not often not boiled unless of course you are flash prepping your millet. Uh, these require drying because they're already fully hydrated. They're not going to absorb much more water once they're in the pressure cooker during the sterilization cycle. Whereas seeds like wild bird seed or millet will absorb some of the surface water and be dry a couple days after uh, sitting on your shelf. All right, I've allowed this to dry out for a few hours now. It's bone dry to the touch. It's ready to be loaded. Each jar gets filled up roughly about three cups. It's easier if you use one of these canning funnels or else you're going to wind up dumping your grains all over the place. You can see that the grains are perfectly dry. They're not leaving any moisture on the glass, no starch, nothing like that. That's the uh, appropriate fill height. Once you have your 10 jars filled, put your lids on. Once your lids are on, you're gonna need to make foil caps for them. Just rip off a strip, fold it in half. There you go. Let's make 10 of those. Now, people will say that these aren't necessary, and technically that's true. Uh, they're not absolutely necessary, but they're nice for maintaining the sterility of your lids post-cycle. So when you open up the Presto or Autoclave lid, you're going to have these jars exposed to the environment and your gloved hands, whether or not they've been soaked with ice or not, you then grab the sterile jar by this barrier and bring it over to your workstation where you would then take it off and do your work maintaining the sterility of the opening of your sterile vessel so i mean it's not necessary but it's nice to have once your jars are done put in your spacers trivet three quarts of water now start loading in your jars And the final three go on their side on the top. Now, you got to keep in mind that there is a lid lock here. So you want to arrange things so that there is a space, ample space, so that when your pressure builds, there's, a, there's free space for your valve to lift up and down without catching on the side of these jars. And that's how it's done, leaving a space. Now put your lid on. And slide it closed if it doesn't slide close it's a good indication that you haven't left enough space for this uh the valve underneath it's catching on the lids or on the jars turn on your heat source now we just wait for the water inside to come to a boil you'll know it's sufficiently boiled when the overpressure valve pops up and the lid lock pops up once that happens you can start your 10 to 15 minute timer to purge the trap gases inside. If you do not vent off the gases inside, you will not come to the appropriate internal temperature because it has not all been replaced by steam. And steam is what we're using to sterilize these jars. All right, so both of my valves have popped up. You can hear the audible hiss, which means it's venting. And now it's time to start your timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes is up. Apply the jiggle weight, let it build to 15, and then start the two hour timer. I'll let the gauge climb to 17 before I reduce the heat. Less is not more with sterility assurance, so instead of running the standard 90 minute, I run a two hour cycle. The extra 30 minutes is a cheap insurance policy against potential contamination. Two hours is up. Now just let this uh, naturally cool overnight and uh, take your jars out to work in the next day. 
is now the next day. It's been cooling overnight. This is where the foil caps come in handy. If you're going to be using these to work on, grab by the foil cap, place in front of your flow hood or in your still air box, whichever one you use. If you're not planning on inoculating these immediately, there's really no need to use the foil cap because they're just gonna be put on a shelf anyways. If that's the case, don't use a cap. I won't be using these. I just use the foil cap as an example of a sterile barrier. These will be going on the shelf, so never put your grain jars on a shelf with the lid on. The lid will just trap moisture between the foil and your filter and you could get uh, contamination issues like mold. The same applies for post inoculation. Once you've inoculated these jars, you don't want to keep your foil caps on for uh, the spawn run. When working in flow, you can uh, leave the caps on, take them off one at a time if you like, or you can take them all off. Then proceed with whatever inoculum you uh, happen to be using at the time. When operating in a still air box, just take these all off once you have them loaded into your box. Once all the foil caps are removed, you're gonna have a big pile of molded foil caps. Just save these for later, throw them in a little bag or something and uh, use them for the next series of runs. They last quite a while unless you tear holes in them. And that's how you prep cereal grains for grain spawn.